One of the biggest problems that we see in our clinic for those patients who have SIBO is nutrient malabsorption that leads to chronic fatigue syndrome. And so while many practitioners want to talk about all the ways to kill the bacteria and the probiotics that you should be taking to help rebalance gut flora, one of the most important factors that I think gets overlooked are some of the nutrient deficiencies that are caused by SIBO and how these nutrient deficiencies lead to many of the symptoms experienced like fatigue. I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and in today's video, I want to specifically uh, shed some light on SIBO, but specifically some of the different ways that it causes chronic fatigue and nutrient deficiencies. One of the nutrient deficiencies that I specifically want to talk about today uh, is what we see in over 90% of our patients is B12. Not only is it important to test vitamin B12 levels when you have SIBO, but if you have B12, uh, this deficiency it can certainly lead to chronic fatigue as well as so many of the other B12 symptoms like headaches and migraines and numbness and tingling in the hands and feet. So why is vitamin B12 so important and when, when it comes to fatigue, right? Well, B12 is important and necessary because it's important for red blood cell production. And red blood cells carry oxygen throughout your body and anything that increases oxygen in your body helps energize you mentally, physically, and even emotionally. One thing I really want to stress to you is if you have red blood cell count resulting from a B12 deficiency, it may not be as simple as just taking B12 to help with your chronic fatigue, especially when you have SIBO. And here's why. Many of my SIBO patients also have thyroid disease, heavy menstrual cycles, they're taking medications that deplete B12, maybe they're on antacids, proton pump inhibitors, diabetes medications, histamine blockers, all problems that many people who have SIBO also have. And so it creates this cycle. Some of your current health problems and even some of your medications are not only contributing to your SIBO, but in addition are causing your body to become B12 deficient. And so what I'm gonna share with you in the next five minutes or so regarding SIBO and chronic fatigue is gonna be super important. Now, when it comes to small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, there's been a dramatic change and there's been a dramatic shift in the normal bacterial flora, which in turn affects your nutritional status and your nutritional absorption in many different ways. So let me give you six ways that SIBO causes chronic fatigue. Number one is I already mentioned that people with SIBO often are B12 deficient and some of the medications uh, that they're taking are causing those B12 deficiencies. But this is really only one way that SIBO causes chronic fatigue syndrome. Reason number two is competition. And what I mean by that is that when you have SIBO, the bacteria are actually competing with you for other critical nutrients from the foods you eat because it never makes it into your cells. Because here's what's happening. The bacteria in the small intestines are like little thieves. Uh, they don't belong in the small intestine. They belong in the large intestine uh, where these bacteria are supposed to be. But the problem is they're robbing your body of these nutrients to feed themselves. You know, food should be absorbed in the large intestine, but instead the bacteria are, are in the small intestine where they're getting access to those nutrients first. Now, if you aren't absorbing your nutrients because bacteria are getting to them first, it should come to no surprise why you're sluggish, run down, chronically fatigued, brain fog, depressed all the time, right? Even though you might be eating a balanced diet, getting enough calories, doesn't necessarily mean that you're able to absorb all those nutrients from the food you're eating. Reason number three is bloating and diarrhea. Now, again, another cause of, of not having enough energy and feeling fatigued is a reduced appetite due to bloating, feeling full all the time, having diarrhea. You see, bloating and diarrhea present unique challenges. If you're bloated and you're full all the time, guess what? You really don't feel like eating. Many times I hear from patients, they say, Dr. Hagmeyer, I'm just not hungry. And this can make it difficult to eat and hit the nutrient requirements needed throughout the day. Diarrhea, on the other hand, uh, obviously another very common symptom that we see in, in patients with hydrogen-producing bacteria, they also find themselves being tired and run down because food is going through their gut too quickly. These nutrients are not having enough time to get absorbed, and these patients often see undigested food and supplements in the toilet. These patients often find themselves in dangerous situations because of serious malabsorption and malnutrition, and again, they're just wilting and withering away. Number four is damage the absorptive mucosa, gut inflammation and leaky gut. Some bacteria can be incredibly destructive to gut tissue. And again, bacteria in the small intestine can damage the absorptive mucosa of your intestines that leads to inflammation, leads to leaky gut. And this damage further causes problems with the absorption of amino acids and proteins and carbohydrates, again, leading to weight loss and deficiencies in B12 and things like iron and zinc. Number five is enterotoxins. Enterotoxins are toxins that are released by different kinds of bacteria. Sometimes they can cause diarrhea and nausea, but sometimes the damage is a little bit more subtle. 
The end result is these toxins lead to fatigue, these toxins lead to brain fog, they lead to skin conditions like acne and rosacea. And again, they cause toxins to be released in the gut. And this is where supporting the liver with toxin binders and, and liver itself is important. Thyroid, number six, hypothyroidism in its own right can cause fatigue. But the problems with thyroid disease is that many of my patients who have SIBO only find out that they have thyroid disease because we tested them for it. So every person who has SIBO really should be checked for thyroid disease. And that's because thyroid disease can cause SIBO and SIBO can cause problems with the way the body, with the way the thyroid makes T3 and T4. SIBO can lead to problems with poor conversion of T4 into T3. And that's something that we often see, which is that low T3 syndrome. You see, T3 is the active form of thyroid hormones. And when your thyroid hormone levels are low, you can suffer with fatigue. You can suffer with weight gain and depression and acne and low stomach acid and constipation. And if you have hypothyroidism and you're taking medications such as Armour, Synthroid, Level Thyroxine, the inflammation in your small intestines can also interfere with the way your thyroid medication is being absorbed. So again, those are just two major links between thyroid disease and SIBO that I want you to be aware about. So while it may seem like a daunting task to try to address chronic fatigue when you have SIBO, based on the many causes that I've talked about in today's video, it's really not once you know where the problem is. 10 out of 10 times, most people are not being properly tested. And that makes it impossible to try to fix something if you don't know where the problem is or how it's broken. Once you know where the problem is uh, and you understand what the, really the root cause of your SIBO is, you can now start addressing these issues one by win. One, base hits win ball games, right? But you have to have a game plan. And as much as I would like to offer a quick fix in today's video, it's not possible because getting diagnosed and tested for SIBO, that's the easy part. Identifying all the actual root causes that are the contributing factors as to why you have SIBO, that requires more personalized approach. But here are some final thoughts on treatment when it comes to SIBO. Treatment for some people may involve antimicrobials, antifungals. Maybe you're gonna make, need to make dietary changes and implement low FODMAP diet or an elemental diet. In some patients that have SIBO, their microbiome may be so fragile that killing this overgrowth with antimicrobials and antifungals may make the problem worse. In these patients, it might be worth considering other areas of the body to start with first. Start correcting hormone imbalances because we know the impact that hormones have on intestinal motility. So that might be a good first step. Addressing nutritional imbalances, reassessing the medications you're on might also be some initial good steps to start with. In other patients, you might consider addressing problems like sleep and stress. We know that that goes a long way, addressing that fight or flight system and getting those patients and, and people back into that rest and digest. The point here is that our bodies are complicated and basically, uh, what we need to do is we, we need to try to find balance in the, outside of the digestive system many times and improve more than just digestion. This is why I call it the big picture, but I'm certain that if you work with someone, you work with a healthcare practitioner who's not only certified in functional medicine, but has experience in looking at the big picture, you'll find answers that you're searching for, and that will in turn help you overcome fatigue, reclaim your energy and your vitality. Now, if you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you have questions about working with my clinic, you can visit my website and find out how I work with patients. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. And if I was you, I would check out this next video that I did on the ileocecal valve and why it's so important. Take care.